Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 18. We are in the off season and look at that. We still have our intact coaching staff together for at least one more season here. So Clint Hurdle will get one more chance to prove himself. We've got arbitration offered on everybody here. We got Jameson Tayon, we got Andrew Heaney, Michael Feliz, Ryan Schimpf, Ryan Presley amongst others looking at the contracts that we offered out there we tendered all of these players Blaine Enlow we got Eliza Hernandez Tyler J Willie Hobart Taz Hobart uh, Capusano we got Diaz we got Aiden Whitford we got Mark Vientos the rookie of the year Bubba Thompson, Justin Williams, so yeah, offering a bunch of people. We are taking some trades out here now. Uh, we're going to bring in some people. Let's see, Fernando Cabral, we're going to take him. It's just a C potential guy, but he's younger and better than any of the bums we were giving up. Now, relieving pitcher Julian Fernandez, we do need to bolster this pen just a little bit. We're going to get rid of Brett Gardner now, uh, Danny McCardle, who's only a C potential at 21 years old, and we're going to dump some money from Anthony Swarzak's contract, and we're going to bring in a 72B young relieving pitcher. So we'll bring him in. We're looking to bring in Christian Horn with that trade. He is an A potential outfielder. And then we're looking to bring in starting pitcher Junior Sato. So Sato and Horn, both uh, subscriber prospects. So we bring those guys in. Mookie Betts signs with the Dodgers for $109 million over six years. Jacob DeGrom signs with the Athletics for four years, $59 million. He's only an 85 overall right now. Then we sign Yoannis Cespedes to a two-year $30 million deal. 94 overall. Marcus Stroman signed by the Orioles. And Kevin Gosman signed by the Nats. The Tigers go out and get Chris Archer for a three-year $40.5 million. Mets get Andrew McCutcheon to a one-year $8 million deal. Rangers signed Jake Arrieta to a one-year $11.3 million deal. Rangers will trade for Eric Hosmer and give up Carlos Martinez and subscriber recruit Jackson Smith. Okay, we go into the Rule 5 draft, and I think we lost somebody in this draft. I'm not exactly sure. We might have lost a guy. It's not going to be that huge of a deal to us. Arbitration, Torres, there's Ryan Schimpf. They side with Schimpf, which kind of stinks for us. Feliz, they side with us on Feliz. They side with Heaney. So we're going to make some moves out here. Now, this is a crazy one. We are trading the man we just signed, Yoannis Cespedes, for we're getting Trevor Story back. We needed a shortstop big time. We lost one. In free agency, it was something we had to do. And then we made a trade for Connor Egan over there at first base. So looking to see what we can do in spring training here as we simulate all of spring training. Let's see what happens here. We have got some guys going on the DL early. 15 and 13 and 15, 16 and 13 through spring training. So looking at what our rotation and lineups are going to be going into the season, we got Jameson Tayon, we got Henderson Alvarez, we've got Andrew Heaney, we've got Mitch Keller, and we've got Richie Kelton. So that's looking like it could be a pretty killer starting rotation. Mitch Keller in that four slot. Richie Kelton in the fifth slot. So good to see those two guys up and running. Fernando Guerrero, very good for long relief. Maybe a spot starter. Jordan Hicks will also be sitting in that long relief pen. Wayne Donahue and Michael Feliz will be the middle relievers. Two choices at setup man is going to be Trevor Rosenthal and Cario Ferrioni, who came on strong last year. And then Felipe Rivero, still the closer. 
uh, for this team for the time being going into next year. Looking at what our lineups are looking like, we got Ryan McQueen, we got Ryan Mata, we got Trey Mancini, Jed Jerko, Josh Bell, Brendan McKay will be up with the major leaguers this year, Trevor Story, Louis Brinson, and Zachary Swain. So uh, against the lefties, we'll bring in Tom Wood over Ryan McQueen. So those two guys will split time. We'll see how that happ how that works out. Austin Meadows will also get his way in there uh, over Louis Brinson at times against left-handed pitching. So we are all set to begin the season. So we're going to do things a little bit differently because views have not been as high as we would like on this series uh, with me taking it as slow as I have. So we're going to be a little bit more simulation, a little less gameplay just because uh, we want to get through some seasons quicker. So let's see how it goes. We starting off this season three and four. It has not gone well so far. Darren Faulkner, we beat him 6-1, as you can see there, or 7-2, that is. There's Darren Faulkner. Rough start for his season, but we sweep the Marlins, which is something that we need to do. We need to sweep those uh, lesser teams. We need to take care of those series if we're going to be a playoff contender, maybe a title contender, maybe a pennant, pennant race contender. All right, we're getting some injuries early on. Not exactly what we want to be dealing with, but it is nonetheless what is happening. All right, so we look we're sitting there at 15 and 7 right now after a sweep of the Reds. That is a huge sweep. We needed that. Uh, split with the Nationals. Come on, uh, we lose the, the Cleveland Indians series. We never beat the Cleveland Indians. We lost that St. Louis Cardinals series as well. Christian Stewart's going to be out for a day or two. Uh, auto utilize him coming back. We should win this Mets series, and we do. Look at that 12 to 1 on the last game right there. So we win the Mets series. We're sitting at 22 and 16 after losing the Brave series. We will lose the Giants series also. A lot of this not going our way at the for the time being. Ojeda coming off the DL. That's huge. Monta Harrison getting injured. Okay against the Rockies. We lose that series as well. So we've lost three straight series now. Sitting at 24 and 21. Harrison is no longer injured. EJ Moore will be out for over six months. That is terrible to hear. We do not need that kind of injury. And we lose the Brewer series and the Cubs series. So we've lost like five straight series now. Ojeda is on the mound. Tyon now. We are just not getting wins. Look at this. L's all around. So we fix our lineups. We get a win there against the Dodgers. But still lose that series. We have lost a bunch of series to the point where we are actually under 500 right now. And it's clearly not going the way we want. Bobby Boucher will be out for a few days. Okay, so 28 and 32 to start the month of June. And we have a draft. So I think that's where we might end this episode. But let's see. Let's see how the draft is going. All right, so the Marlins get the first pick in the draft. Um, are we going to start the draft or what? There we go. Okay, so the Marlins get the first pick. We have the 24th pick in this draft. Let's see what kind of player we can find. Looking at what we're, we've actually scouted out, and there's only three guys we've fully scouted, and one of them's terrible. Uh, well, not even fully, but mostly scouted, and one of them's absolutely dreadful. So I'm going to look for a combination of potential and MLB ready. So let's see. That's a 75 potential. I'm not liking what I'm seeing, ladies and gentlemen. I might have to go for this 2024 guy. Because I'm just not seeing. I need potential. All right, here we go. 2023 first baseman. Maybe. That's a maybe. 
Oh, this is such a hard choice because I just don't like what's out here right now. Nothing's really catching my eye. All right, we're going to go with the first baseman. We'll see what he ends up. Ooh, we get a competitive balance. Okay, let's see if we can take advantage of this competitive balance pick and make it work to our advantage. Andres Ruiz, yeah, we'll grab him. Okay, pick it again. Second round. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a 2022 80 potential. Starting pitcher might be a guy I want to go for. Ooh, okay. Hold on. Shortstop, though. Yeah, let's go with shortstop. Position players are a little bit more value to me right now. We have pretty much all of our starters are B or A potential, so I don't really want to stack too much there. I want to give some guys some room to grow. I mean, I'm going to probably end up taking starters at the end of this draft, but let's take as many position players as we can, going with that left fielder right there. And then round four. So three picks remain for us. Uh, oof, jeez, just not a lot of scouted things here. Uh, this is all starting pitcher. All right, let's grab one. Let's grab one. Hope there's a couple more left. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Okay, there's two 280 potential guys left. We're going to grab... Let's grab Chachin. And hope Calzado gets left there for us to just grab all these guys that could be 80 potential. There we go. That's the last 80 potential guy. We're going to take him. And that'll be the end of the draft. Let's take a look and see what we went ahead and got. All right, so Silva is a 60 overall C potential. That's not fantastic. Not our best choice. Uh, Ruiz is a 62 overall C potential. Again, not our best choice. Guy's got some killer contact, though, right there. Johnson is a 63B. Okay, I can deal with that. I'll take that shortstop. That's somebody we can possibly use in the future. Reyes is a 59C. That's a guy that gets traded immediately. Joel Encarnacion, 73C. That's actually not bad. I'll take a 73C. He can have some trade value. Chachin is a 62B. That's going to work out. We will take that in a lefty, no less. And Calzado, look at this pick. A 75B. That is strong. I will gladly take him. He could see the majors in a year or two. All right, so we'll continue some simulation. We got a little bit of time. Kind of want to keep these around, you know, 15 minutes or so. These episodes. Just try and get through maybe like to the all-star break maybe do the all-star break as I normally do and then do the next half of the season so that'd be like three episodes and then the playoffs would be like the fourth episode so like yeah we're gonna cut down from about eight to ten episodes per season to about four or five we're gonna cut it in half pretty much with what we're doing here just so you guys know how the series is basically gonna finish out um, but we're gonna get through a few more seasons for sure Okay, let's see. Auto fix that. I mean, I tried to take the series slow and get people into the prospects and stuff like that, but it, it just it, it it's only worked for a select few, and just there aren't that many people watching. So we'll leave this here. Ooh, look, we got All Star break coming up. So there we go. We're already at the All Star break. We are 17 games out of first place. Just so you guys know. We are way out. We are 10 games below 500 at the All-Star break. We have key injuries. Austin Meadows is way out there. And EJ Moeller has been out and will stay out. Jameson Talion is actually pitching incredibly. He's a league leader in something. Just taking a look at what the guys are doing before we end the episode. Ojeda's 0-3. He's, he's not pitching very well. I'd like to see him do better than that. Mata's not doing bad. Richie Kelton is not doing terrible. So, 
Look at look at these look at these minor league guys. Two ERAs and stuff. Two two point eight. A couple fours out there. Look at that two point one nine by Tayon. Three point oh eight seven five. He's zero and eight. That might be a trade deadline move to be making. We got to bring Cario Farioni up, so we're gonna make sure that that happens. Closers, Felipe Rivero's not doing very well. Um, quickly looking at this, Brennan McKay's batting pretty decent. 283 with a bunch of homers. I'm seeing some decent batting numbers, man. Cini's doing fantastic. Guys, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you are new. See you next time.